Welcome to Tuesday Night Rockstar Rally. I'm so glad you're here. It's our special Thanksgiving week edition. Is anyone hosting Thanksgiving this year? Janelle? <laughs> Bridget's like, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> anyone else? Is, so everyone is traveling or going to someone else's house for Thanksgiving? Yes, okay. Um, I need you to tell me what your favorite Thanksgiving side is. You got to have one. Like, what's the one thing you look forward to eating every Thanksgiving? For me, it's stuffing. Now, some people call it dressing, but stuffing for me, and it's homemade. Because, like, when do you eat stuffing any other time of the year? It's not like July and you have, like, a side of stuffing with your salad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I feel like it's you only at Christmas and Thanksgiving. And so I make homemade stuffing from scratch, and that's, that's my favorite. Stuffing, green bean casserole. Oh, my God. Let me tell you a green bean casserole story. I hate green bean casserole. <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my mom made green bean casserole for like a meal, just like a normal meal. And um, she, I was like, our family was like the clean your plate club kind of family. And if you don't clean your plate, like you don't, you basically don't leave the table until your plate's clean. Like that was our family. And so she made green bean casserole and I was like, mom, I don't like this. And she's like, well, you're going to eat it. And I was like, mom, I really don't like this. And she's like, well, you're going to eat it. <laughs> so she puts them on my plate and I was like, mom, I really don't like this. I don't want to eat it. And so I sat there for hours and hours and hours after everybody was done having dinner, just sitting there being stubborn, like tears streaming down my face, like crying, like I will not eat this green bean casserole. And finally I was like, I'm, like, I'm done with this. Like I've got to make this happen somehow. So she would like turn around and wash dishes and I'd take a scoop and <clears throat> put it in my napkin and close the napkin and be like, Bleh. and I'd sit, I sat in my seat and like made gagging noises. So <laughs> she thought I was eating it. <laughs> so this like, so I'm like completely scarred, completely scarred. Well, then they found it in the napkin, of course. And then I got in so much trouble. <laughs> And I just like hate to green bean casserole to this day. The thought of it makes me want to bomb. But I think I'm scarred from childhood. But I know it's so many people's like favorite thing. So stuffing, honey baked ham, homemade dressing. Yep, yep. Do you call it stuffing or dressing? Who calls it stuffing? I say stuffing. Who says dressing? No one. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm like, who are those people? I don't know. I don't even say dressing. You say both, Keila? Okay. Twice baked potatoes. Ooh, those are good. I nev I've never had those for Thanksgiving, but I love twice baked potatoes. Mashed potatoes from scratch. Gluten-free desserts. Okay. Oh, are you gluten-free, Bridge? I didn't know that. Okay. Um, Keila says that her mom did that to her and her sister with catfish. <laughs> To this day, she still can't stand seafood. That's amazing. Homemade gravy. That is a good one. Because when do you ever treat yourself to gravy? You know what I mean? Like, let me just pour this on Thanksgiving for sure. Hi, Court. <laughs> We're talking favorite Thanksgiving sides. Oh, stopping. Stuffing, 100%. That's what I said too. Because oh. when, and also when else in the year do you eat stuffing? Like never. Never. Not enough. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. Homemade gravy. So good. Twice baked potatoes. Stuffing. Okay. Good. All right. We're all on the same page, except for who said green bean casserole? Who was it? Deborah. We can still be friends, Deborah. It's all right. <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. I love Thanksgiving. Um, I'm excited because I had planned on doing like a little mini series over the last three weeks of like our core values anyway. And so we tackled simplicity the first week, authenticity last week. And then this week, it's just kind of happened to be generosity the week of Thanksgiving, which I think was really cool and just kind of a happy accident. So tonight is um, just sort of like a gratitude edition of Rockstar Rally. 
And so I do want to talk about um, generosity a little bit in your business and what that looks like and why that's a core value for Sensi. But I would love to, um, oh, I can see so much better. Yay. Um, I would love to hear from you maybe um, what you're grateful for um, that has to do with your Sensi business. So whether it's a personal development thing or part of your journey or a friendship or a trip or just something, um, you're in Sensi. And whether you've been with Sensi for two weeks or two years or 10 years, Sensi's probably left you better than you were when you found it. Um, and and the, the cool thing is, is that it's, it's not like, you know, Sensi is magic and, you know, it's this magical company that has this like effect on you. But the community in Sensi, our focus on personal development, our focus on, um, leaving things better than we found them, giving more than we take, um, being a people who contribute, right? And being, being a, a person of value um, and someone who contributes value to the world, to our relationships, to our society around us. Like that's just the ethos of Sensi. Um, and that's different, you guys. That's different than probably your employer. It's different than other direct sales companies. Um, it may even be different from some like friends or relationships you have in your life. Um, you know, the idea of generosity. And so for me, if I think about, so this, this month is my nine year anniversary, mind blowing. Um, but if I think about who I was when I first joined Sensi, I can say that I'm like a completely different person today and not in like a, I joined Sensi and became this clone, right? Of other people or felt like I had to fit into this mold or look like other people or sound like or talk. That's not what I mean at all. I mean, like I'm a better version of me kind of thing. Um, and it's because of Sensi and it's not just like home office or like, the $99 that I paid for the starter kit, then this magical transformation happens. It's been a lot of hard work over the last nine years. And it's been because of my business, the people, the opportunities, the events, the places that I get to go and the things that I'm surrounded by and the people that speak into my life and that I get to speak life into, like that is where the transformation has happened. Um, now I know people that come into Sensi and there's no transformation whatsoever. That can happen. You can join Sensi. You can be in Sensi for five years or 10 years and be the same person when you start and when you leave. But if you're vulnerable and open and willing to change and, and willing to look at yourself and say, how can I be better? How can I grow stronger? How can I do more? How can I change? How can I be a better version of myself? And it's something you actively work on and actively seek out. Um, this company and the opportunities that it brings you can really transform your life. Um, and so for me, the gratitude in my business runs so deep and it's so intrinsic and it's, it's, it's sort of like all encompassing, you know, it's not just one thing. I'm grateful for free trips, of course. Like I have literally been able to see the world because of this business. So this business has afforded me the opportunity. I've been to uh, three different, four different continents, three different, three different continents, like 15 different countries or more. I've been to places, I'm 34. I've been to places by year 34 that most people spend their entire lives dreaming of going and never even get to go right? And that's because of this business. So my gratitude for the travel is un unending. Like the opportunities that I've had to see cool things, like I've gotten to see stars in the Southern Hemisphere that like we can't even see in here in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, like, like things like that. It's just mind blowing to me. I've gotten to see wild Africa is like, <laughs> on the plane, on the plains of wild, wild animals, like on the plains of Africa, like I've gotten to sip limoncello, like on the coast of Italy, like where they grow the lemons. Like, it's just amazing things like that. Um, 
you know, and so I'm super grateful for that. I think um, a happy accident from my business was like the friendships and the relationships that I have with all of you, with teammates, with people that I've met on Sensi trips and Sensi events. And my gratitude for that runs deep because that, the relationships, the people, that's been the most, um, what's the word? That's been the most like monumental piece of my transformation is who I've been surrounded by. And I'll, I'll tell you this. And actually me and Aikila have, have talked about this. Um, there's a saying that says you are basically a compilation of the five people you spend the most time with in your life. And so what you have to do is ask yourself, who are my top five, right? Who are the people that I spend the most time with? And not who do I want my top five to be like, who are the, actually the five people I spend the most time with? And if in, and if in those five people, someone is not smarter than you or stronger than you or wiser than you or richer than you or farther along than you, then you have a wrong top five. You should never be the smartest one in your top five. You should never be the oldest one in your top five, the wisest, the farthest along, the richest, right? You want to surround yourself with people that you want to emulate and people that you want to be like, and that's where tran transformation can happen. Here's the cool piece. You having this top five, I guarantee you, you are the top five for someone else. You are the top five for someone else and you have the opportunity and the ability to speak life and help them find their own personal transformation and personal development through being in their circle. So my gratitude runs really deep for the relationships that I have in Sensi. Um, and then I think lastly, my gratitude runs really deep for the financial freedom that I found through this company. <laughs> you know, um, if you guys haven't been following my story, my husband was just able to retire from his career at 37, six, 36. I'm the worst. <laughs> I'm like, what year was he born? And then I have to count back. 36. That's right. Anyway, he was able to retire from his career at 36. Um, that's like something, it's something I have I always worked for, but before I found Sensi, I never even knew that that was an option. I never even knew that that was possible or that people were doing this or like, I never even knew any other life other than you go to work, you work nine to five, someone else pays your paychecks, you invest in a 401k, you retire at 67, right? That, and that's what we're all taught, which is fine. And, but I thought that was your only option. I thought that's just the way you do it. You have a mortgage, you pay your mortgage until you die right? Like I thought that was just the way people live and people live in debt their whole lives and like people work and like we live paycheck to paycheck. And so I just thought that was a, the only way to live. But Sensi introduced me to another option. Sensi showed me that there was freedom of time and flexibility and choices and that I could have choices in my life and that I didn't have to work for someone else nine to five and I didn't have to invest in a 401k and work till I was 67 and have a mortgage and pay it until the day I die. Sensi opened my eyes to a completely different life that turns out to be the one I want. And that was, that's the happiest accident. So I'm, I'm grateful for all of those things, that's my gratitude story this year, this season, this week for Sensi. How about you? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Just unmute yourself. I'll go. Never afraid of awkward silences. <laughs> well, lucky for you, I'm a loud mouth. So. Hi, Court. <laughs> Hi. So I think that for me, um, the biggest thing that I'm really, really grateful for through over the past five years or so has really been, um, like I found my voice a little bit more. Mm. I've never really been one that wasn't like outgoing, but I always kind of held myself back a little bit and felt that I was trying too hard. It's going to sound crazy. I was trying too hard to be generous, right? I was always including other people, my family, my friends, 
in, you know, fundraisers and charity events, but I always kind of felt like, you know, I was just doing enough. And I feel like once I joined Sensi and realized that I could do fundraisers and I could give back um, even more so, I really just found kind of something that I've really always been passionate about. And I stopped holding myself back and found this to be my number one favorite thing to do. Um, one thing that I've really, really enjoyed doing, and it's so simple, but I guess that's the other, you know, something we got to keep in mind, simplicity, yeah. hello, yeah. Yeah. is just sending someone something that needs a little pick me up, how far that goes and what better way to do it than with the stuff that we already have on hand. So something that we're already passionate about, some products that we already love by sending someone literally a bath bomb that had a really bad crappy week, the amount of emotions that I've had people like bring up to me from just a bath bomb has really to me been so amazing because I can love on people so much harder now. Yeah. And I just, I really, really love it. It's that's, that's so sweet. And like, I love that you talked about the emotions piece of it too. Like, so we're, we're in the emotion business too, you guys, like fragrance is emotional fragrance evokes memories, right? We talk about that all the time and being able to give someone that kind of gift, even if it's unexpected or, Hey, I know you had a crappy week or you're going through a hard time. And here's a way that I can be generous with you. Like I love, and here, here's the coolest part. I love that your generosity is what's bringing you joy, right? It's not just something you do. It's not just like, I'm checking off this box and making myself feel good by being generous. Like this gen the generosity piece of my business brings me great joy. And so that's really beautiful. And I've, I've loved watching your, um, uh, like gift a meal thing that you do sometimes. Oh. So for, those, for those of you who don't know, Courtney is, um, a cook and she's, really talented in the kitchen but on top of that she has had this sort of like gift a meal and it's just something she does like not her business related like it's just her and what she does like she'll make a meal and she'll make a second meal and say nominate someone who needs a like a meal this week or who needs a night off from cooking or who needs like an extra <laughs> special pot of soup because life is crap right like just something like that like it's been so I've loved watching that and that's been inspiring to me to be more Thank generous you. with things like that and it's a beautiful like act of service that you do so I love it. Thank you. I love it. Who else? This is our grateful edition this week. What are you grateful for in regards to your Sensi business? Don't be afraid. I have one. Hi, Ryan. Hi. So for me, I, for those of you that don't know, I just moved cross country. So I, in like, we, we literally came out here for um, SFR in California and I live here now. <laughs> so, like, I like it here. <laughs> that's literally what happened. Like for those of us that were there, we remember we went out to that rooftop bar. I actually met my current roommate there and now I live here. Oh my so, God, that's amazing. Yeah, so that being said, we came back from um, SFR and my mom joined Sensi under me. And so my mom is under it and then my sister is under her. And my mom, my mom literally joined just so that I could promote. That was the only reason that she joined. <laughs> I was doing everything for her. And now she has three people under her and she's really close to getting lead. And like, it's, it's brought our relationship so much closer. Because we, after I graduated for, like, I've, for those of you that don't know me, I literally have been gone since, like, day one. Like, the second she put me out of the crib, I was gone. I never came home. I'm an so adult. It, <laughs> honestly, I've, like, I left for college at uh, 17, and I got in the car. My friend, like, came to pick me up. I got in the car and was like, bye, mom. Like, I didn't even say any of the, the <laughs> sweet, happy stuff. I was gone. So she's been really happy about this, and she's really doing well with it, and she likes it. So I'm thankful that something that I did just for my gym bag has given my mother and I something to talk about pretty much every day. That is one of the coolest things I've ever heard. And how cool for Sensi to even like just bring families together, you know, like what a beautiful, what a beautiful piece of your story. And like, what a cool piece of Sensi. How many of you, um, Sensi people have a family member also in Sensi? I know Maria does. Yeah. Anyone else? I think I have a cousin or two. <laughs> I can't remember. 
they go in and out. So we'll see. But um, I love that. I love that so much. Awesome. Who else? What are you grateful for in regards to your Sensi business? Don't be scared. Just say it. <laughs> I just need two more people to share. That's it. I know you have lots to be grateful for, and I can see some of you think or thinking things in your brain, but if you're afraid to say it, don't be afraid. This is a safe place. <laughs> Akila says she doesn't want to cry in public. That's okay. Crying is good. Okay. So I'm going to talk about generosity then real quick. Um, <laughs> sounds good, Akila. So I'm going to talk about generosity real quick. Um, so generosity is the third core value that Sensi has. So um, our core values are simplicity authenticity and generosity. And so we've covered the other two. And so, um, like I said, it's kind of apropos that generosity just happened to fall the week of Thanksgiving. That was really a happy accident. Um, so let's talk about ways that we can use our business to be generous. So Courtney mentioned something earlier. Um, and that's just a, Hey, I have this on hand. I want to be a blessing to you, or I just want to lift your spirits a little bit. And that's a beautiful way to be generous. Um, and also, you know, generosity makes us feel good, right? It, feel, it feels good to give to someone else or to brighten someone's day or uh, to be a light in someone's dark place. Like it feels good to do that. Um, what are ways that we can use our business to be generous? I think you guys forgot Rockstar Rally is interactive. <laughs> <laughs> well, fundraisers number one, obviously. Fundraisers number one, fundraiser. absolutely. Fundraisers number one. So different types of fundraisers. Fundraisers can be done for anyone. If you don't know how to do a Sensi fundraiser, you and or an organization or a family or whoever you're raising funds for, um, sell products and then you donate your commission or a portion of it to that person, company, cause, organization, whatever. So I've seen things like um, families have fundraisers, like to raise money for medical bills, right? Someone gets sick unexpectedly or someone's out of work unexpectedly. You can use it for that reason. Sports teams, um, school classes. Um, I know that like I've seen teachers do fundraisers because a lot of teachers have to buy their own supplies and decorate their own classroom and things like that. Um, what'd you say, Ryan? <laughs> garbage garbage absolute garbage that they have to pay for their own supplies oh so yeah no i know it's, it's i know it's terrible i agree um i'm like garbage fundraisers i don't know what that is but <laughs> now i get it <laughs> um so let's see sports teams i've seen like dance clubs get fundraisers um little league teams i mean there's the opportunities really are kind of endless, um, pet shelters, right? SPCA, um, there's lots of things you can do. So if you've never done a fundraiser, I really wanna encourage you to just find something either that you're passionate about or find something that just has a need. If there's a need that you can meet, meet it. That's a beautiful way to be generous in your business. Um, it's even more awesome if it's something that you're passionate about, right? So if, if I, if I get to do fundraisers for dog rescues, that's like right up my alley. That's so my thing. It fuels my fire and I get to be super passionate about that kind of fundraiser. It's a way for me to be generous and give back. But here, here's what happens when you're generous in your business, it's, it's the idea of what you put out, the vibes you're putting out, that's what comes back into your life and into your business, right? when you're generous into your business it has a beautiful wonderful business building effect for you in the long run okay here's why fundraisers are good for you and good for your business the main reason is it introduces you to people you would have never met before were it not for that fundraiser okay so that's the number one reason expands your circle introduces you to people and if you guys don't know this people 
are everything in your business. If you don't have people, if you don't have connections, you don't have contacts, you don't have a business. Okay. So being generous in your business and offering a fundraiser introduces you to people and relationships and contacts you would have never had, people you would have never met, and you never know, you never know who you could meet. You could meet your next rock star recruit who changes your business. You could meet a CEO of a certain organization who wants to do corporate gifting with you and order 500 something for Christmas. You never know, you guys. You never know. You never know who you could meet. You could meet someone who is a, a stay-at-home mom and like just needs a, her thing that's just for her. And like you just completely rocked her world and changed her life with a $99 starter kit. Okay? You never know who you could meet through a fundraiser. Also, once you get your fundraiser in, if you do follow up with all those people, what's in the follow up? The fortune, the dollars, that's where the commission comes from. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. So I love it. Fundraisers, random gifting. What are other ways we can be generous with our business? I don't think it counts the same, but I do wish lists. So like I have any time that I host a party, you know the 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 full catalog sheets, the like three hundred stack one. Yep. Everybody gets that. I like this sense and stuff that they like, so that they have a copy of what they like. But so I also do. So if they bring me a referral or if they're like buying a lot from me, because I have people that periodically buy a lot, I just pick something off of the list of what they already like and I send it to them Jeez. as like a as like a thank you for being the being a VIP. Thank you for this referral. Thank you for helping my business. But also it's so meaningful to them because it's something they actually want, right? They've said like, this is on my wish list. This is something I really like. Now, don't get me wrong. Free is free. People like free. People like fun things. But when it's something, it's like a scent they actually want and not just like a leftover scent of the month that you couldn't sell from 10 months ago, right? Or it's like a, a bath bomb that they really want or something that's actually hey, this is mine, right? It makes them feel so warm and fuzzy. That's like a beautiful personal touch too. That's, that's also excellent branding and marketing. And you may not have even put it on that scale, but that's absolutely beautiful branding, marketing, generosity, all wrapped in one. So I love that. I well, love that. Most, most of the people that I do that for, I get different referrals from it because they'll have friends that are like, oh, I want to buy something, but I don't know what it smells like. I don't know if I'm going to like it. And they'll flat out be like, call him. He will sit on the phone with you for a half hour to figure out what you like. Like he just sends us things that we love all the time. So Aww. that that's worked out really well. And I actually adapted that from when we did the, um, the how to make orders off of the scent and warmer of the month. Oh, yep. But I basically used everything that she did in that and just started doing it again. So this month I sent 30 of them out and every single person has contacted me on how to get more stuff because of it. So send, ask people what they want and send it to them. It's Genius. worth it. Genius. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's, tar it's targeted marketing, right? Like it's, it's smart marketing. So we talked um, in our branding call about if you appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. It's, it's the same kind of idea that like, if you're just sending them like a rando, you know, I, I have people who only loved, only love baked goods scents. So even though Luna is freaking amazing and Amazon Rain and Sea Salt and Avocado are my jam, if someone likes Mocha Doodle and Hug in a Mug and I send them Sea Salt and Avocado, they're going to be like, thanks, but I'm never going to use this or they're going to re-gift it or whatever, right? I'm like, everyone in the world should love Sea Salt and Avocado, <laughs> but... Right. And, and I, I know we all agree. We're all sets of people, but like if, if someone loves vanilla bean buttercream and hug in a mug and mocha doodle and that's their jam and that's all they want. Like my, like my mom, her scentsy drawer is all pumpkin roll, gingerbread donut. Like, and that's pretty much it. That's all that's in there. <laughs> and everything else I'm like, mom, smell this. She's like, no, it's not pumpkin roll. <laughs> 12 months out of the year. Like that's her. Right. So if, if I send her sea salt and avocado, she would re-gift that. So I love that idea. It's targeted. It's specialized. It's focused. I love it. And it's, it's both being generous and smart at the same time. So here's, here's, here's a note I want to give you on generosity. Um, generosity is important and beautiful, but make sure that you are making smart choices in your generosity. Okay. 
something that would be a bad idea would be to give uh, some uh, someone who ordered on your PWS, like send them a free warmer in the mail. <laughs> okay, a, a warmer at minimum, okay, it's gonna cost you $20, and then it's gonna cost you the money to ship it. So since shipping is outrageous, right, at the post office, it's gonna be like $10 to ship it. Um, so we're talking like, and so let's talk about the tax that you pay. So we're talking like $32 minimum, okay? In order to make $32 commission, let's think about what you have to sell. If you're making 25% commission, you have to sell like $120. So you'd have to sell $120 just to pay for that warmer and shipping, okay? And if, if your customer ordered $120 and you send her a warmer and shift it to her in the mail as a thank you, that means you just made $0 on that sale, okay? So that would be a way that generosity can affect your business negatively because here's what happens. If you're, if you're over generous or, and I, I don't even wanna use that word because that's not a thing, but if you're not smart about the decisions that you make in your generosity, it, it can ruin your business in the long run because you are here to make money. You are here to provide for your family. You are here to change your life, earn trips, whatever you want to do with your business, pay your bills, go on vacations, you know, whatever you want to do, you're here to do that. And if you give your commission away and give your commission away and give your commission away constantly, you end up not making any money and you're, you're going to quit. You're going to quit because it'll cost you more money than you're making. Also, it's not duplicatable. You can't ask your team to do that. You can't teach your team to do that. So generosity does have a strategy to it and you do just have to be smart about what you're doing. So every time you give something away, you have to ask yourself, how much do I have to sell in order to make enough money to purchase this product, right? Now, if you wanna use your host rewards to get free and half price stuff and give that kind of stuff away or give it as an add-on or be like a spend this and you'll get this kind of thing, beautiful go for it, but just remember you're setting the tone with your customer. Whenever you give a customer something for something, they're gonna have that expectation every single time they order. So if your customer orders $30 on a PWS and you send them like a free bar, guess what? You're kind of tied in every time they place a PWS order, you have to send them a free bar. Because if they get a free bar from you and then the next time they order, they're gonna be like, well, I didn't get anything then they're gonna go find someone else to shop with, right? You're kind of tied in. So you have to think about that too. Like think about, think about the future of your business and kind of what are you tying yourself into? How can you be generous in ways, maybe be generous with your time or with your words? Here's what we have to understand. Generosity isn't always about money and dollars and things. Okay, so you might be looking at this and you, or you might be saying, I'm new, I don't, I don't have a lot of money to spend. I guys, you don't have to spend any money to be generous. You can be generous with your words. You can be generous with your time. You can be generous with your empathy or kindness, right? You can be a listening ear to someone and that's a way to be generous. There are so many ways to give fully that don't have anything to do with money. And honestly, I think that's probably the best way to be generous in your business anyway. It really, really is because that sets you apart. That's what makes Sensi different. That's what makes you different. That's what makes you attractive and unique and special and authentic. And that's what makes people choose you over and over and over again. It's not the free scent circle they get in the mail every time they have a, an order with you. It's the fact that you listen to their needs, you anticipate their needs, you do the follow-up with them, you check in and see how they like stuff. It's the kindness, it's the time, it's the acts of service, it's the thank you note with a scratch and stuff sticker on it in the mail, it's those kinds of things. So think about that when you're thinking about how you can work generosity into your business. How can you work generosity into your life, right? Um, so I just wanna, hopefully that gives you the freedom to know that you don't have to like spend your commission because your commission is your, that's your income. That's your money. And even Orville always says, he says, don't spend Sensi money on Sensi and don't spend family money on Sensi. <laughs> your, your, your money that you come in is your family money. Your money that, that comes in is your, that's your income. That's how you have to look at it. So you don't have to be spending all of your money, pouring it back to 
giving away free gifts or gift with purchase or whatever. Be generous with your words, with your time, with your kindness, with your empathy, with your relationships, those kind of things. I promise you they're way more meaningful. They're way more meaningful and long lasting and build deeper connections than sending something for free in the mail. Everybody likes to get free stuff in the mail, but people will choose you over and over and over again because of the way you make them feel, because of how you listen, those types of things. So think about that when you think about generosity in your business. Okay, I love it. Um, any other thoughts on generosity or ways to use your business to be generous and giving towards others or anyone who feels brave enough to share what they're grateful for in their business? <laughs> <laughs> so with my business, um, what I do for my consistent customers is um, I find out when their birthday is and I do birthday gifts with them. Sweet. That's what I do. And like, I find out like what, like I, I know what scents they like. So I have people that like the woodsy scents, um, which I don't, but that's okay. I, I know <laughs> they like them. And then the other ones that like the bakery scents. So I'll specifically gear their gift towards that. And um, like one of my customers, like she has her Scentsy Club and she gets for me often. And um, it was just her birthday, uh, the beginning of this month. So I had stashed specifically for when her birthday was the bergamot and solar driftwood, which is in her Scentsy Club. But I had the room spray and the scent circle and some bars and um, some of the other bring back my bars that she ordered like only a couple of, but um, I had that put away for her and she was like totally surprised, but um sweet. it made me happy yeah I always like get so happy when I see them happy so that's so sweet that's so sweet and what um what kind of things do you do for birthday gifts for them um so it like it varies so like for her I did like I said like the room spray because like I had that stash because it was that scent um so I had like the room spray the scent circle and like a few bars um Cause it, uh, I forgot, I don't, it was like the bring back my bar, um, mm -hmm. from the last one. So I had those specifically stashed cause I knew I was going to be giving it to her. And then, um, over the summer for a couple of people, I had, um, Scentsy Fresh and like a few other stuff cause she has, um, dogs. So mm -hmm. I put that in cause she hadn't gotten Scentsy Fresh from me, but she gets from me like every single month. So if they're ones that are like, I want to say like high rollers, but you know, like they get for me a lot. Sure. I'll, I'll do like a, a bigger gift, but if it's, um, if they get for me consistently, but in smaller amounts, I'll do like, um, a bar, a wax bar and a uh, room spray or like a uh, car bar. Cause car bars are my favorite and like yeah. a room spray, something like that. Okay. But awesome. Just show my appreciation for them. And always like in the sense, like Ryan had mentioned, like, I know what sense they like. Yeah. I love that. That's really sweet. And, and I want to say too, like, if you want to do birthday club or birthday gifts or anything like that, like, um, don't feel obligated to give full size products either. Like it's totally okay to give someone samples, you know what I mean? For their birthday. So you can really like stretch your dollar and don't feel like you're having to drop. Cause, cause what, what happens when you have 50 VIPs? you know, or a hundred VIPs. So what happens when you have a hundred VIPs? Let's say, Let's say their birthdays are even keel throughout the year. That's 10 per month, right? And so if we had to give away 10 Scentsy Freshes every month, that's $100, right? So you just have to think about that too as you grow. Now, don't get me wrong. I have customers who drop two and $300 at a time, okay? Those I'm going to give them a Scentsy Fresh or something like that. But feel don't feel obligated to give full size products because if you give someone a sample of counter clean and a happy birthday card, they would be like, so thrilled. They don't get that from anybody else ever anywhere. Right. And so I love that. And I love birthdays. That's something I don't do. And I have like a major opportunity to grow there. That's such a great idea. I love it. I love it because it's also like, Hey, they didn't have to purchase something. You're just like, I just love you. <laughs> you know, thanks for being in my life. Like, thanks for being born. I'm celebrating the fact that you're born. So that's cute. I love it. Um, Amanda said she, we, so we used to have a scent called happy birthday. For those of you who don't know, it was so good, like cake and icing. And um, they, sometimes they come back to bring back my bar. And so she says she stocked up on the happy birthday bars a while back and she, she'll send someone like a large sample on their birthday with a card. That's really cute. 
really cute. I love it. Okay, any final thoughts on generosity for Thanksgiving or just what you're grateful for? Okay, well, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I love you guys. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving. If you're cooking, good luck. Godspeed. May the force be with you. All the above. Um, I'll be eating. Maybe I'll make a pie or something. We'll see. We'll see what my baby lets me do. <laughs> so, okay. I love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.